Hi, good evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I'm here to share with you this interesting topic that I recently presented about, and I was very appreciative to the people who watched the live webinar. And so for my other audiences, if you are interested in learning more about this, the primary aim of this is to highlight the value of looking at the science around what I consider are these strange clots that embalmers are noticing. So the point that I was focused on was that I want you to join me, and there's a link below, at the my my school for COVID-19 that I've opened some time ago, but I'm really beginning to focus on it because there's so much valuable information that needs to be shared. This will be freely available for a short time, but after that, there will be a small charge just to support ongoing research. So please join in and let's see if we can make a difference with education across the world. So just a few simple points about this topic. Now, if you are squeamish, please look away now. I'm going to show you here a quick image. And this image was taken from that program, that documentary about died suddenly. And what I was interested in was this image of what the embalmers were seeing with these fibrous materials here. And I dealt with that in the presentation. I differentiated it from these clots. Now a clot is dark and it's mixed with blood cells and platelets. And that looks like a clot, but this looks like something else. What is it? That was really the interesting point that was supposed to draw you in to want to know more about this. Well, for those who were willing to join, what I was talking about there were cryoglobulins an interesting pattern that occurs. And this is what it would look like in the context of a patient's normal serum. This is a control patient. At the bottom here, you have this precipitate when the patient's serum is cooled. And I cover that in the presentation, the difference with serum and so on. And this is what, in my uh, humble scientific opinion, would explain the pattern that these embalmers had been noticing cryoglobulins. What a strange thing. And for those of you who have never heard about them, well, uh, in effect, what I'll show you here is what they are composed of. So they are usually composed of immunoglobulins. These are IgM, IgA, and IgGs. This is from the presentation, by the way. And when they all clump together, they can then form these precipitates that would look something like this, and you can see here, these are the different types of um, cryoglobulins. And then they would make these precipitates in the serum when blood is cooled. And that would fit in perfectly what, they would they, what embalmers were noticing. And so cryoglobulins are really important and an area that it only popped out to me because of what Dr. John Campbell had said about the cooling of the blood and the precipitation of these protein proteinaceous materials that really got me thinking, whoa, this could be cryoglobulins. Well, is there any other evidence of anything like this occurring? Is this just in my mind? Well, maybe not. Here I've got a paper that I'd come across quite recently. And this paper here was written in um, or published in 2021, December, a case report. And this occurred after Pfizer vaccination, including uh, autoantibodies, cryoglobulinemia. That's exactly what we said, and digital necrosis in a patient with pre-existing autoimmunity. So the important question that I'd usually ask is, is this relevant? Is there any evidence of this occurring? We don't know how frequently it occurs, but for certain it can occur. And when we look in a bit more detail here, what we had in this paper was a 64 year old lady who had a history of Raynaud's disease and hand arthritis. So she had background autoimmunity and then three days after receiving her first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, she got much worse. And in that context, what they then found was that, I'll, I'll show you an image of what happened to her hands. 
and this is from the paper if you want to take a look at it i'll make sure um it's in the in the link afterwards sorry about that um this is what her hands would have looked like then and you can see these dark areas here are representative of a loss of blood supply and gangrene to the tips of her fingers but it's important to know that she had background autoimmunity this lady and this occurred in the context of a vaccine response so it can occur what we don't know is the frequency and the significance the challenge with cryoglobulins and this is explained as well in the uh, in the module and the courses is that you have to be looking for it it's not going to jump out at you because you have to keep blood warm before you then try and cool it to look for the evidence of cryoglobulins in this particular patient her cryoglobulin levels were at about 14 percent uh, significantly high and after she was treated with steroids and plasmapheresis they brought it down to one percent on discharge and she also had a number of other abnormal autoantibodies but as i said she had a background of autoimmune disease so it's just a summary to highlight that this is important Critically, this needs further research. I can't say for certain that this is occurring across the board, but it certainly makes sense to explain this abnormal pattern of these fibrous proteins that embalmers are seeing because the person would have died, the blood would have cooled, and then it would have precipitated. So it does make sense, but it points to the fact that it's not good enough for people to just ignore these things. We need to look carefully at pathology and autopsy to be able to get clarification about what exactly may be going on across the world. So thank you very much for joining me. And again, I'd encourage you, please use the links below, either Substack or on the Learn World's educational site. Please join me for this journey of me sharing as much as I can to make sense to the general public. Have a great evening, everyone.